We're just doing a bit of work on the carburetor for the forklift here, just kind of checking it out and cleaning it up as we're going. So I just have a bit of uh, carbon choke cleaner here. So there's not really much for O-rings in this. Like I would have thought that there'd be one on the needle, like down in the hole where it came out of down there, but I haven't seen one. But there's got to be one in there somewhere to keep it sealed. So the only real measurement you need to do is to take, uh, just lightly bottom that out. And I found mine was two and a half turns out. There's two uh, electronic components here. I'm not really sure what they are. It's kind of solenoid, I think. But uh, when you take them off, they're all the same wiring. So I haven't looked at the wiring diagram for them. So it's been just been marked. One is the front one and one is the back one. And then unplugged. Yeah. Uh, the machine's been backfiring a bit, so I wanted to clean the carbon out of the carburetor. Uh, other than that, so there's some jets here. Just need to clean them out. All you would do is, I use a, a wire off of a bristle brush and just kind of clean it without scratching it. In the manual they say specifically not to do that, but that's uh, the way I do it. Just have to make sure all these little holes and everything are good. There's a few springs, you'll have to remember where they are. Aside from that, it's pretty simple. And there's this, I guess this is the top half of the carburetor with the float and the accelerator pump. I haven't gotten into it yet, but you can see the evidence backfiring. To take it out, there's a couple of linkages and screws you kind of got to take apart in a particular order, but it's not too big a deal. Then on the machine, Underneath the carburetor is a governor to kind of to give a consistent operation so the uh, our RPM without over revving and stuff like that. So the governor is underneath of it and the manual it pretty much says to leave it alone unless there's something wrong with it because you're just going to make it worse if you screw around with it. And there's just a plate with two uh, nuts holding it down. So you just undo those. There's the throttle cable and the clutch cable, or the uh, choke cable. You disconnect them. And like I said, you mark the wires for front and back, so you know which one they came off of. It might be that they joined together in the wiring, but I haven't taken the time to figure it out. And the uh, just a copper hard line for the uh, fuel feed. And then there's this little tray with a little drip uh, drain hole in it. So that drain hole just makes sure that any, if your float gets stuck, it just pours the gasoline on the ground, I think, if you follow it down, rather than it pouring on the manifolds and causing a fire. Because these things are used indoors, you don't really want them burning down inside. Uh, I think that's about it. There's the filter on the other side of the pump. But there's no, nothing too special about it. So I'm just gonna put the bottom of the car back together and then we'll start working on the uh, top half with the float. All right, so we've done some uh, work on the top half of the carburetor now. So uh, this is the uh, needle and float assembly right here. So you can access part of it by removing the uh, banjo bolt for like the fuel from the tank, and the needle has uh, a couple of parts to it. The accelerator pump comes out by uh, disconnecting this clip. You'll see it's kind of obvious when you're looking at it, but you have to remove that clip and the accelerator pump in order to get that gasket out. And the way it's kind of blown out, I'm thinking that it might have been a bit loosely assembled, but I'm not too sure. But I just I did some more cleaning with the uh, carb cleaner. One thing I forgot about was that it melts plastic, so my marker started to melt. I don't know if it's bad for O-rings or not. I imagine it probably is, and it probably says not to bring it near O-rings. But uh, there's not really much for O-rings in this thing. It's mostly just uh, shafts with bushings on them. So I try to get as much of the carbon out and clean the passageways. Nah, it's pretty easy. I'm not going to adjust the uh, float on it. And when I referred to the manual earlier, what I should have said was that there's a really good uh, U.S. Army manual that's available. So I'll put a link in the description. So it covers this carburetor, 
It covers the Nissan engine. It covers a lot of the uh, forklift that is uh, transferable across like all of the TCM forklifts. It shows how to take the mast apart and do a bunch of things like that without using heavy equipment. You can use the hydraulics to your benefit to pull it apart rather than having a second forklift available to take apart your first forklift. So uh, otherwise, you'd have to buy like 10 different manuals to get all that information because TCM didn't put them all in one because it would be thousands of pages. So uh, I guess we'll put this back together. I'll try to show it with all the linkages assembled and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we've got the uh, carburetor back together. So this is how the uh, spring works on the accelerator pump. This is the choke here. It has a rod that adjusts the throttle. There's a gap there that we can set. The uh, spring goes between these two rods here that have the uh, rubber isolators in them, or plastic isolators. This is a vacuum actuated component here. Haven't tried to figure out what it does or what the adjustment is. This uh, rod is back in here. There's a couple of cotter pins missing and they're really tiny cotter pins so I had to like take a regular cotter pin and just use one half of it to uh, pull things together. But, uh, that's pretty much the extent of it. I guess I'll get things hooked back up and then uh, go from there. All right, so we got the carburetor back on, kind of pieced this together. For some reason, the person has disconnected the uh, crankcase ventilation and just has a tube going to the ground. The previous owner did that, and they just plugged this other pipe. I'm gonna revisit that at some point. I gotta figure out if that's the PCV valve in here or what. A little bit more figure out there. Got this vacuum line hooked up onto here. I found that there was, uh, between the two uh, bodies of the carburetor, they were kind of loose, so I tightened those up. Got this all tightened up. Doing a, a compression test now. So I'm using a Bosch 7828 compression tester. It's pretty good, it's got all the parts, and it's not cheap brass. Like if you look on eBay, some of them are quite horrible condition. So I've gone through and done the test. I got 150, 160, 175, and 155. So 155 on each end, the better in the middle. So I'll just uh, go over that again, just so you get an opportunity to see it. You're supposed to disconnect the ignition when you do this, but I haven't. Hopefully I don't do any damage to it. It is like an electronic ignition in there on this case. Uh, this one doesn't have points from what I've seen. I have a Pertronix upgrade on it or something. So you hold the pedal down and you just crank the engine. So see if we can get an angle to view this. Bear with me. Now I gotta replace the Bendix on my starter. So we're at 150 in a little bit. It was 155 before, we're losing a bit of battery power. I have to recharge that. I did charge it before doing this. And uh, yeah, that's uh, about it. I'm not sure what the spec is on them, but uh, so at 155, 10% is 15. So we're a bit over 10% between the worst and the best cylinder. But as long as it doesn't smoke, I really don't care. It's got to perform, obviously. I don't want any oil smoke, so I might run some bearings through the fuel system to clean up the rings. So I gotta dump it through the carburetor. I gotta do that kind of late at night because it's gonna put on a, a smoke show for everybody outside, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want trouble with my neighbors. So I think that's about it for the fuel system. And oh yeah, the other thing was I had the fuel valve turned off. It's just down in here so that you're not pumping fuel into the engine when you're uh, doing the compression test. So that's about it for this little portion of the video, so thank you for watching.